Yes, and I just met your holy spirit this morning. <laughs> Lord, I just feel such a burden for the families, Lord, for the generation. Lord, we just lift them up to you. He said, no weapon form against them shall prosper, Lord. Lord, I know you are covering our families. Lord, we just thank you. Send your angels forth around them. Yes, Lord, just let your Holy Spirit reign. Yes, Lord, let your Holy Spirit just reign upon the house. Good morning, church. I just love when the Holy Spirit just moves. <clears throat> I'm Pastor Cecilia, one of the pastors here at New Wine Ministry. I just want to welcome you. I can't even, I, I feel like I can't even talk, Vicki. It's just like the Holy Spirit is just moving today. Ooh, thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit just moving. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Yes, Lord, thank you. Just like Vicki said, from generation to generation, Lord, that you are just moving in the midst right now, Lord. Lord, thank you just for your hand of protection right now, Lord. The last few weeks I've been talking about the peace, the Prince of Peace, that this Christmas what I'm focusing on is the Prince of Peace and how am I going to show others the peace and stand in his peace that others may see it. And I, what's coming to me, I didn't write it in my notes, but a couple, a couple of weeks ago too, I said that um, how the Holy Spirit just downloaded on me when I was listening to Mary Did You Know, and how when I was singing it, and then I started singing the lyrics again, and, and how he's saying he's gonna make the blind man see, he's gonna uh, make the deaf hear, and that's what just keeps coming to me. Lord, you are opening up the eyes and the ears of your people. And, and as I was talking to the women here, just, just worshiping and just knowing that he's bringing us up to another level. He's opening up our eyes and ears like never before to hear his voice. And I just, I just feel that it's happening, church, that it's happening right now. I, can, I just, ooh, I just, ooh. That's all I can say is I know the Holy Spirit is moving. Amen. And <clears throat> I'm going to uh, give you my main scripture today because I didn't even plan to do this scripture when I started, when I got here to the church and I started praying. And um, the scripture, kept, what kept coming to me is, uh, now behold the lamb. That's what just, that, that even that song, now behold the lamb. And I said, okay, Lord, what is the scripture? What does the word say? And it's John 1, 29. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And when I started studying that scripture and just breaking it down, that first word saw, and he says, see, take, heat, behold, be aware, look. And that's what he's telling us right now is the time to take hold and just see what's going around us. Be aware. And even who do you need to show others the love of Christ? Who do you need to show that Jesus to someone? Be aware. And the next word in that same scripture, Jesus, Jesus. And the word Jesus is uh, Jehovah is Savior, Jesus, the Son of God. And that's what just kept, you know what, Jesus, just say in his name, Jesus, worship and pray. You know, he's the son of God. He can do all things. And as we're, as we're ministering to people during this Christmas season, remind, sometimes we don't know how to say things or what we say. But to me, if I just say Jesus, he gives us those, those that, the, the words to speak. He gives us the wisdom and the knowledge, even how to say things. The Holy Spirit, I don't, I don't know, um, how you guys but sometimes when I'm like Lord I just don't know what to say and I just start worshiping him and saying thank you Jesus and he just brings those words I, I was sharing with the women this morning that uh, Sunday night at watch and pray I just knew it was God I can't even tell you what I said Sunday night but 
I just knew it was the Holy Spirit just speaking and using me as a vessel. And, and when we're worshiping and just saying, Jesus, use me. Amen. And the <clears throat> next word, how it says, John saw Jesus coming and come. It says, come and go. Go forth. You know what? Come. Be in his presence. One of the things is make one's appearance. And just being in his presence and knowing he's coming. He's, he's worshiping. He's going he's gonna to show us the way, the truth, the light. Amen? In that, in that same scripture, the word said is say, speak, call, tell. You know what? Go tell them. I, th when I was reading this scripture, I kept thinking, go tell them on the mountain. You know, that, that song, just go tell them on the mountain. And today when Jose and I were coming to the church, Jose said, look at the sunset, how beautiful it looked. And it just looked like mountains to me today. It just looked, when we we're looking at it, it just looked like different mountains. And, I was, and that's what kept coming to me. Go tell them on the mountain. Go tell them. Go set, you know, go tell everyone Jesus is coming. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Behold, Pastor Vic asked the other day, what does behold mean? And, 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 you know, everybody started calling out, but it says, look, see. You know, t sometimes when you say behold, you, I stop because I'm like, what do they want me to see kind of thing. You, and, and that's what he's saying, stop and listen. Just get into his presence. Just getting into his presence gives us so much peace. Amen. I'm going to read that scripture one more time. It's John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sins of the world. Amen? And that's what we know what he came for. Because we look at Jesus right now, especially Christmas season, we see baby Jesus. We see baby Jesus. But he came to save the world. He came, you know. Behold, stop and look. He came to take away our sins. Amen? Amen. And even right now, even thinking about that, uh, <clears throat> that song now, Behold the Lamb, that I was listening to, you know, it says, He came that we may be saved. You know, the Lamb of God came that we may be saved. And just the, the blood that he had to shed, shed for us to be saved. Amen. So this being Christmas week, I started thinking about what do I want to share for Christmas? And I started thinking about sharing the Christmas story. You know, how do we share the Christmas story? So I kind of broke it down, and I wanted to read, a, it's, read some scriptures about um, the Christmas story. So first, I want to start in Mary, Mary, Jesus' birth announcement to Mary, Luke 1, 26 through 39. This is, I just want it so you can write it down and share too with your family, the Christmas story. Luke 1, 26 through 38. During the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God's presence to the unmarried girl named Mary, living in Nazareth, village in Galilee. She was engaged to be married to, to Joseph, a true descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Grace to you, young woman, for the Lord is with you, and so you are and anointed with great favor. Mary was deeply troubled over the words of the angel and, and bewildered over what this may mean for her. But the angel reassured her, saying, Do not yield to your fears, Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen you to surprise you with a wonderful gift. You will become pregnant with a baby boy, and he and and you are to name him Jesus. He will be supreme and will be known as the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will enthrone his king, him as king on his descendant David the throne. He will reign in king of Israel forever, and he will reign will have no limits. Mary said, "But how could this happen? I'm still a virgin." Gabriel answered, the spirit of the holiness will fall upon you, and Almighty God will spread his shadows of power over you in a cloud of glory. This is why the child born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, 
your age, your age aunt Elizabeth has also become pregnant with a son. The barren one is now in her sixth month. Not one promise from God is empty of power, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary responded, saying, This is amazing. I will be a mother of the Lord, all his servants. I accept whatever he has for me. May everything you have told me come to pass. I just like, you know, a lot of times we say, Lord, I just do whatever you ask of me and whatever you would say. And just this is the passion version. And I was just reading that and just like, you know, at first fear came over her. And then he's like, no, don't be scared. Don't be scared. He's with you. And that's a lot of times we, we let our fears take over instead of being able to do all that God's called us to. And we have to learn to walk in that peace, amen? And just, just reading the story of the birth of Jesus. <clears throat> and the next uh, thing is uh, Jesus' announcement uh, to Joseph. And that's in Matthew 1, 18 through 25. This was how Jesus, God's anointing one, was born. His mother Mary had promised Joseph to be his wife. But while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Her, her fiancé, Joseph, I lost my, was a righteous man full of integrity, and he didn't want to disgrace her. But when he learned of her pregnancy, he securely planned to break the engagement. While he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep. And at a supernatural dream, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in clear light and said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't hesitate to take Mary into your home as your wife because the power of the Holy Spirit has conceived a child in her womb. She will be given birth to a son, and you are to name him Savior, for he is a descendant to give to his life to save his people from, from their sins. This happened so that what the Lord spoke through his prophets would come true. Listen, a virgin will be pregnant. She will give birth to a son, and he will be known as Emmanuel, which means in Hebrew, God be becomes one of us. When Joseph awoke from his dream, he did all that he that the angel of the Lord instructed him to do. He took Mary to be his wife but they refrained from having sex until the, she became until she gave birth to her son whom they named Jesus. Lord, just thank you for that even that the power, even reading that scripture just just the power of the Holy Spirit and what he can do for us. Amen. And then Jesus bo Jesus is born Luke 2 1 through 7. During those days, the Roman Empire Caesar Australian ordered that the first uh, census be taken throughout his empire. So Joseph and his fiancée Mary left Nazareth, a village of Galilee, and journeyed to the, their hometown, Judas, to the village of Bethlehem, King David's ascendant's home. They were required to register there since they were both direct descendants of David. Mary was pregnant and near, neither less to give birth. When they arrived in Bethlehem, Mary went to, into labor, and there she gave birth to her firstborn son. After wrapping the newborn baby in, in stri strips of cloth, they laid him in a feeding trough, since there was no available space anywhere in the upper room in the village. Everyone had to travel to his or her hometown to complete the mandatory census. Can you just... Uh, knowing you have the birth of Jesus and just knowing that thing. I just think about Mary. I guess I'm thinking about as, as me as a mom, the things that you know that's going to come forth. Just like that song, Mary, did you know? She, did you know all those things was going to happen? I, it just would be like heartbreaking, but knowing you're doing God's will. See. <clears throat> Amen. Vicki said she had to rely on the Holy Spirit more than ever. And that's what we have to do. 
even with our faith walk, is to rely on the Holy Spirit more, more than ever right now, just to rely on the Holy Spirit and, Lord, I'm going to do what you've called me to, and I'm going to rely on you and just walk in you. I, I, can't, I, can't, uh, I can't imagine people doing it without him. And, and just, but just knowing that God has called us to a higher place and just being led by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we're like, Lord, we don't know what you're doing, but I'm just going to walk the walk. Amen. And that, that can be hard for us sometimes. Or, and like, Lord, just strengthen me. The, the, what keeps coming to me is the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. That's what just keeps coming to me over and over to fear not because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And if we're abiding in him, he's going to bring us that strength and joy. Amen. And you might, and you uh, also want to share with others, the angel appeared to the shepherds. That's Luke 2, 8, and 20. You can keep, you know, reading on with Luke uh, 2. And when I was, <clears throat> that even that Luke 2, how in the scripture he says, for there is a peace, a good hope given to me, some of men. Right, that that he brings that peace of hope, that just those things that come forth, Amen. And then the arrival of the wise men is Matthew two one through twelve. I'm just breaking it down so when you do want to share that the Christmas story, to share the whole Christmas story, Amen. <clears throat> and you may want to begin with the Old Testament foretelling Jesus' birth. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. And I want to read that again because that just, just, you know what? God already had foretold the story that Jesus was coming to save the world. Amen. And it's, um, for unto us a child, let me start up. For to us a child shall be born, to us a son shall be given, and the governor shall be called be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace there shall be no end to the increase of his govern government and of the peace he shall rule on the throne of david and over his kingdom to establish it and to be up to uphold it with justice and righteous from that time forward and forevermore the zealous of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Amen. Church, it's just time to arise and shine and let your light shine. It's time to let the people see that light. It's time for us to bring that peace to others. They're, they're, they're so hungry right now to know who the Prince of Peace is. And, and how are you showing that? Can I look on your Facebook page, or can I look at your life and know that I know you're showing that, you're shining that light? That have, have people come and knowing, you know what, I want what she has. Are you shining your light that others may see him? Isaiah 60, 1 through 5 says, Arise from the spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come, and the glory and brilliance of the Lord has ri risen upon you. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, Jerusalem, and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Nations will come to your light, and the kings of the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes around you and see. They are gathered together. They come to you. Your sons, will be, your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be looked after at their side. Then you will see, be, and then, then you will see and be radiant, and your hearts will tremble with joy and rejoice because the abundant wealth of the, of the seas will be brought to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. Amen. Church, it's time to rise and shine and let your light shine. Let the people see the Jesus in you. They're desperate to know the Jesus, the peace, the Prince of Peace. My question for you today is, what act of kindness are you sharing this Christmas season that others may experience his peace through you? How are you going to show others the love of Christ? 
How are you living love? How are you living love to the fullest as Christ has? This Christmas season, show others who Christ is and bring them to Jesus. Read the Christmas story to someone so they may experience a touch of Jesus this season. Amen. And let's always give thanks. I shared with you, you know, what are you going to do different this Christmas season to show even your family the love of Christ? I, I was telling Jose, you know, I really want to do communion together this Christmas season and just, you know, show everyone the love of Christ, that blood that was shed for us. Amen. Let's get ready and take communion. Lord, we're just so thank you, thankful for your son, Lord, that he has come to shed his blood to save us, Lord. Lord, as we go through this Christmas week, you show us the ones that we need to share that Christmas story to, Lord. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my blood, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Lord, thank you for the shed of the blood to save us, Lord. Lord, I just ask you, just bless your people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, as we go today, as your church goes today, let us walk out our faith that others may see Christ through us, Lord. Lord, open up our eyes and ears that we may be able to hear your voice even to the ones that we need to show Jesus to, Lord. Just give us words of wisdom as we go, Lord, to use us as a vessel that we may glorify your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Merry Christmas, church. Have a good Christmas week. Amen.